Hi, my name is Sarah Farragut, and um, I'm an artist who lives in Brockton, and my studio's in Stoughton. Um, I've been doing this, I've been painting since probably like 16, 17 years old when I went to the decor of a museum as a teenager. So that's kind of where I started working on my skills. I used to work in oils, but as I worked in oils, I found that um, they were very formal. They were very stiff. It's almost like the history of painting becomes very daunting when you work in oils. So I wanted it to be more expressive and more personal. So I switched it, um, and I switched it kind of by an accident. Another artist in the studio complex where I work dropped off a whole bunch of his faux finishing stuff because he was moving and he had a ton of crafts paint. So I said, kids craft paints? Why this is perfect! So I started um, painting with the crafts paint and then I had the watercolor crayons and those were very much like kids' crayons. So I could um, be at the border of drawing and painting, which made it, I don't know, it was, it's fun, but it also becomes much more personal than trying to make something that, say, you're, you're painting a scene and you want it to be just a perfect rendition of, um, you know, maybe what you photographed. And in that perfect rendition, it becomes stilted. There's no life in it. You know, it just needs, <laughs> it needs that expression. It, it, it needs that freedom. So um, I think these works have a sense of freeness to them. But it's because I'm using like kid stuff. <laughs> I feel like this is the most mature work, even though it's the most childish work. <laughs> it's like kind of a funny um, split between the two. But um, I've always done work about the place where I am. So um, work of like 10 years ago included like just views out my window, views out my studio window, views out my apartment window. So they're very, um, they're still like very realistic, but they are, the consistency throughout all of them is the way the light moves through those spaces. It is about the light. Massachusetts Point, I believe that's that, I mean, I hope I'm right. I'm not from Rhode Island. I'm sure that I'll be corrected by Rhode Islanders. But it's a beautiful walk where you're along the ocean and there's just so many, um, you know, there's like all kinds of birds and, and ocean and light. And I really wanted to, I, I, I went and I photographed everything at, as I went along this walk and then I go back through the photographs and I try and figure out like what's the most quintessential feeling when you're there and that painting um, when you look at it when it's on display it has a lot of layers and the layers are all different kinds of surfaces like the rocks have um, they, I coat the paper with um, modeling paste and gesso so that when I draw on it, you get that sense of a, of a rock, of the surface of a rock. And then when I take the watercolor crayons and the watercolor and acrylic, now you have the sense of like the water itself. So each thing in that is, um, it's about the light interacting with all of those surfaces so that you and I are in that space. Like when we look at that painting, 
we're both there. You know, it's like, it's a real um, in-depth communication that you can't, if I wrote a story about it, it wouldn't get you in the same place as looking at the painting. Most of my work for, um, for a long time period, I, I had this thing, like I had, um, wow, this, this was way back 1979, I had a show uh, as part of the Museum of Science and it was like small views of the sky and they were pastels, but I wanted them to be very intimate. So the, the, the drawings were seven by nine inches. So you're like this, you know, you're not, you're not surrounded, you're not in it. It's just this very singular um, interaction. But then I said, you know, I've seen like people do larger works and I don't know why it always made me nervous to work larger, but it's a fairly large drawing. It's um, let's see, 18 by 24. So it's a good size piece of work. And it's also, it doesn't have the, the structural thing of the other works. Like there's always this kind of abstract structure in the other works. And this is like moving around. It's, it's sort of like moving around the surfaces of, of these wet rocks. Um, so it's different in that it's um, fluid and it's much larger than they, which is still out of my comfort zone, but you know, it's fun to try. <laughs> the Illuminated Swamp, I, um, I know that's kind of a joke title and it's not political. So, you know, we can just kind of let go of, of that as an angle. But I did take a picture of a local, um, you know, it's where the kids skate. It's on Route 138 in just out of Stoughton Center. And there's something about like the way um, the water is like, it's like a cross between like broken up and being kind of mucky. And then there's parts where it's like clear water when that when light hits that and reflects back onto um, the new growth of the cattails there's this luminosity that happens and i found that luminosity an exciting subject matter the work the color breeze is i feel like even though it has this very primary colors, which is not typical of, of most of the colors I work in, but I view it as one of my most mature works because it does capture that sense of, of light and color moving. You can, you can feel the breeze. It's like the, the sense of that place just pulls you into um, feeling the freedom of um, those, um, you know, at some level, they're just weeds, but they're not. <laughs> I mean, they're, 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 they're just incredibly beautiful, the way they arc and the little, um, you know, bits of seeds that are on the top. And you kind of, you know, because you've got these big colorful arcs going, you can almost feel like like, I don't know, it's, it's like you're flying through them. That it gives you that sense of, of um, you know, the way the, the things on the edge of the ocean are always blowing around. And so it's really one of my favorites. The other thing is, is I rarely use red. <laughs> and that piece, I feel like of, graduated to red <laughs> so it's um it is one of my my favorites i think one of the things that i do want to say and this is um it's the process i've been working at this for 40 years 
and the process is a long, long road. And I guess if you're out there and you're picking up and you're inspired to do work, just keep doing it. Never quit. Just don't quit and you don't know where it's going to take you. So there's a certain element of, of giving in to it's going to develop into something amazing. And that's what I think younger artists, you know, don't quit too early. You know, what do they say? Don't quit five minutes before the miracle. And that's my feeling towards um, people who are starting to paint now and they become disappointed in their work. It's like, keep doing it. You're going to love it. <laughs> My name is Patricia Peña Calle. Uh, I'm an artist. Um, I do a traditional painting. I've been painting forever. Uh, just uh, about two years ago, I fell in love with abstracts, and that's what I've been doing until now. I live in Melis, which is like an hour um, uh, west coast from uh, Boston, but uh, born in South America, Ecuador, so Latina. I've been painting all my life. That's the, the oldest memory of myself I have is painting. Uh, just that, anything that involves colors. But uh, back then, back in my days, uh, my family wasn't happy with uh, um, adopting art as a way of life, like making a living. You know, the, the normal you know, parents worried about your future. So they told me to go get a business degree. So I went uh, just to keep my family happy. And they said that after I got my degree, then I can go and do whatever I want with art. So as soon as I had the chance, yeah, I, uh, I, I picked up my, my uh, brushing my colors and I just, my passion. I, I haven't been able to go back since then. I, nowadays, this is the only thing I want to do ever. Drawing, uh, pastels, uh, carbon, pencil, every, everything. Actually, uh, sculptures too. But uh, right now, I'm focused on doing abstracts only. Yeah, when I, when I, when I want to take a break off from uh, painting, then yeah, I do sculpture. Um, wood carving to everything i everything i do with my hands it just yeah right now i'm just uh preparing for exhibits uh so a couple of weeks ago one of my paintings were was uh, displayed at the louvre um i uh, I, i've been represented lately for um uh, with, from a company uh international art company called vivemos art uh, it's a Brazilian company, so they took, uh, they uh, picked my artwork and took it to exhibit in uh, Paris and uh, also in Rio de Janeiro. Um, a couple of my paintings will be displayed uh, in uh, December. So yeah, for now I'm just preparing for exhibits here and there and I'm just having a good time. My exhibit is called Dreams and it actually has to do with everything ethereal. Um, there's, uh, there's a moment between one thought and the next uh, and the next one is like uh, full of insight. There's uh, people uh, usually don't pay attention to this, but there's uh, there's a lot of going on in your head that is like uh, you're unaware. So if you actually uh, take a moment and stop and pay attention to your thoughts when you're not thinking, I know it sounds weird, but uh, yeah, if you try it, you, then uh, th then you realize there's a lot more to see. And I want I want people to focus on the, on their dreams and everything ethereal because it has a lot of. Uh, uh, answers. What I do is that I, I write everything that I dream uh, in the first thing in the morning. Uh, the first thing I do in the morning, I wake up, I just grab my phone, and then I, 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 I'm actually lucky that I remember about 95% of my dreams. So I keep a, uh, a journal, I write everything. Even if I don't write it, I remember all my dreams. And, I, over, and uh, a lot of my paintings come from those dreams, from the color that dominates a, a certain dream. Very colorful, everything that I see, everything in my world is colorful, so everything is translated into my paintings, all my emotions, all my dreams. That piece is called Volcano. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a favorite one because uh, that was picked for uh, the Louvre. That's the one that was uh, displayed at the Louvre a couple of weeks ago. Um, yeah, I, I was just feeling, for example, when I, I start a painting, it just like um, depends on my mood. It's completely intuitive. Um, it depends on how, how I'm feeling in the moment. I choose my colors. Uh, I don't have to think, I don't have to plan. Everything comes in the moment. And uh, that's a result of a day that I was really feeling accomplished. <laughs> So a lot of energy, a lot of movement, a lot of force in that um, in that painting. It came it came up right as I planned. That's all acrylic, uh, acrylic paint. Uh, but uh, for that special technique, uh, there's no brushes involved at all. 
So what I do is basically I uh, mix my paints every color in a different cup and, uh, and every color I mix it with a medium and with a little bit of uh, silicon oil that helps the separation, that helps aid the chemical reaction that the, that the paints have. So I uh, individually the colors, uh, I mix them up and then I put them all in a single cup and instead of blending them all and creating a muddy color, uh, instead of that, they just create a, 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 a nice picture. It's almost magical, the process. To watch the process happen, uh, it is magical. The name of that piece is Fury. I was not feeling good that day, so uh, yeah, there was a lot of turmoil. And uh, the best therapy for every, especially the negative emotions, is to just paint. That's a great relief. So that, that was the, uh, the, the result of a day that I really wasn't. I was trying to get rid of. <laughs> Uh, heavy emotions. That is uh, hope. Hope. It's just, um, I remember that day uh, people contacted me for a magazine and I was like, okay, I'm doing things right. That's just all positive feelings and I, f I felt literally like I was in Candyland. So, yeah, that was the result of it. I love it when people see, I mean, from past exhibits, I, I love it when people. Um, I can see in their faces they lift their mood because it's so a uh, powerful thought. So the, the colors are so bright, vibrant that they really literally uh, put them in a better mood. I mean, people have told me uh, they have a, they, they approach me and say that they really, really make them feel good and they really, uh, it's an inspiration. They inspire them to try themselves to paint too. And that's the biggest compliment. If I, if a person that is not uh, in the art field, but if I inspire that person to create, that's, that's the biggest account, uh, compliment that I can get. Um, I have one person that told me that she feels like uh, licking my paintings because they're so bright and it's like candy. So that's, that is very, that's what I love about it, getting the, 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 that kind of reaction from people. Don't listen to anybody, follow your heart. It's, yeah, it sounds cliche, but it's just so true. You just uh, follow your heart's calling. Um, that, that don't, don't stop, don't just keep going. That's, uh, that's the only thing that's gonna keep you happy for the rest of your life and accomplish. My name is Casey Rose Bongerzo and I create art for my enjoyment and also for others' enjoyment as well. Um, I'm actually also a registered art therapist, so I do work with people in counseling and if they want to create art, music, anything like that, I am definitely right behind them to promote and support their expression as well. I was into creative art therapy from high school, I remember. It was Miss Hendrick um, at Notre Dame Academy who suggested, just casually suggested about art therapy because she saw how into the arts I was. And I researched it and majored in it in first bachelor's college. And then from there, I just took off. Um, I just continued it. I saw how therapeutic it was for ourselves and then also for other people. It was amazing. And so I continued for my graduate degree and then licensure from there. I've actually worked at a few different places, from older adults to children. Um, I actually do work at a school doing school-based counseling in Boston now, which is great. Creative art therapy is excellent there. Um, also good to help the kids enjoy school, because I feel we should enjoy school. Um, and I also work with clients in the Hingham area as well. And so it's anyone who needs to talk, who, you know, sometimes things don't feel balanced maybe, or sometimes we might feel day-to-day -day is tough to handle. So it's just, you know, someone to talk to. So it does depend if the person is open to it. Um, if not, that's okay. Talking does wonders too, <laughs> so that's okay. Um, if they are into it, I definitely support it, encourage it, and promote it. I do have art supplies in hand, but if someone doesn't feel comfortable with that, then it's okay. My art is more visual. Um, I do support any expressive arts. The art I prefer is any medium, photography, ink drawings, paintings. I also enjoy music, although I feel my talents are not as much with that. I enjoy playing it, um, more of a casual playing, <laughs> nothing professional. Um, but again, something I encourage for other people as I know how therapeutic it feels. I do feel that art enables us to find ourselves and lose ourselves at the same time, which is excellent. It can have that, it can be hanging on the wall or it can be something we create and we can either find ourselves or even lose ourselves in it, which is 
good, um, I think, for the possibility of art creating that. So a lot of these pieces, I feel, I've either lost myself in a way or kind of found myself. And so it's things that are enjoyable and things that love and things that I know art and nature is something that can bring people happiness. And so it's, it's nice to share. So that piece is really special for me. So that's actually my dog, Misty Blue, who I adopted years ago. Um, and so she is wonderful. She's my first dog. Um, I've had family dogs growing up, but this was my own, which seemed really nice. A lot of responsibility, but wonderful. And so I do continue the whole idea as well for giving every dog a home, because I gave her a home because she didn't have one. And so now I actually started volunteering at the Quincy Animal Shelter, I think in 2015. And so since then I've just been helping for other animals to find a home or to have a temporary home there, just for happiness. The ink drawing I did two years ago and Misty Blue is actually five and a half years old. So that is Tucker. Um, that's my partner, Colin. I live with him and we met actually three years ago and our dogs got along great. <laughs> I feel it, things kind of followed from there. And so it is really nice. He's, we call him the old man around home. <laughs> He's wonderful though. He is quite a character. He's very obedient, um, very loyal. And I just feel that look on his face right there tells you everything. <laughs> the dogs won't stay still long enough for me to do <laughs> these ink drawings there. They're not good at modeling. Um, but yes, I usually uh, incorporate photography with that. That's another thing that helps bring me happiness and other people happiness as well. Um, I just feel it's nice to look at and to kind of lose yourself in a way, just to enjoy where it is. And even if you can't tell where it is, to wonder where it is. It's good for the imagination and even just to talk about it then. These are images I loved creating. It felt good inside and it felt nice to do. That's why I encourage others to do it as well. But if they just want to look at them too, that can feel just as nice. My name is Marguerite White, and I've just started in the fall as the art teacher at Woodward School for Girls in Quincy. It's been really fun inheriting this program um, from, I think, a, a series of really talented um, teachers. It's, uh, it's a school that requires um, all of the girls right through middle school to have art four times a week initially, then three. Um, and then we have an honors program with AP art, but it's a very small school, so the classes can get combined. The students really work together. I can work in much more kind of open uh, and experimental ways. Um, and they just, they have a really kind of courageous way of taking on problems. You know, I handed them a lot of oddball materials and they say, okay. They're not afraid to make mistakes, and uh, I think because of that, they, they make some pretty interesting work. I made a piece that is all black. I like to call it the black swan, and it. my idea was originally like a spider, and then we also, my project had to do these metals around it, and we had to involve metal, so I liked to wrap it around all like the spiders, and then I added hair for more like texture. Most schools don't really get to experience art, and when they do, it's once a week. So I love Woodward because we get to have art normally like five to three times a week, and that's pretty amazing because art is something that I definitely value. I have an amazing teacher, and she definitely makes me work a little bit harder and add new things to what I work on. So I'll do a new pattern or a new color that I wouldn't think of. My ideas have been definitely able to grow because I am able to try new things that I never thought I could before and I'm able to work with new materials and things that I really love. My name is Ariana Rukoy. I made a watercolor piece. So I made my watercolor piece on a woman named Zendaya who I look up to very much because she was always on the TV and I grew up with her and she sings and she dance and she acts and she's so amazing to me so I thought the best way as an artist to express that is to paint her. I have not done watercolor a lot. I'm trying to get much better at it but I think watercolor is very expressive and very beautiful and it shows that art doesn't have to be realistic to portray a message. 
I like using very bright colors. And one of my favorite parts about the picture was her hair because it took the longest. It was lots of swirling colors and I had to mix it up and really put a lot of detail in it. I always say this to people visiting Woodward is that the art program is the best in most schools because I live in Boston but I come all the way to Quincy to go to Woodward because it has such a great art program. There's so much time to spend on your art. So many girls who graduated got into great art schools because the teachers are so dedicated to their art students and they're always open to ask questions and the materials are almost limitless. So I think it's a really great school for art. Uh, my name is Yongxi Shu. I make a self-portrait uh, because I always obsessed with portrait. Uh, my first portrait was two years ago and I love it. I usually use black and white and some very safe color, nothing too crazy. <laughs> I'm actually very surprised that it came out so good. I use orange, some yellow and some little bit of brown. It's you know, in, in the winter so I have some warm tone. I gotta say, you know, in the past they never say that I, my painting is so good, so well. Until I started, well, the teacher started to say, oh, your painting is so great. Actually, because my teacher don't want to, my, my teacher, she doesn't want me to uh, use, because, you know, uh, uh, she doesn't want to use only white, but the, the, portrait, the picture is only black and white, so uh, I don't want to mix it, um, mix it up. So I'm not good at using, uh, using only black, so, um, so I decided to use uh, some very light color and, and, it's, and it, then I use orange, start to use orange, you know, in the final I, ha I have a little bit of uh, red left off, so I just use the white. I actually had been live nine years in Curaçao. It's an island. Uh, their culture is all about uh, blue, white, or very colorful, like very African style. So actually, I they just impact me a lot about the colorful.